Good morning. This is called Montezuma's Castle, an old Native American cliff dwelling where Montezuma never was. This was left behind by the Hohokam and Sanawan people. And this is Montezuma's Well, a year-round source of water for the Sanawan people, about a mile and a half from the cliff castle dwellings. And these are the Tuzigut ruins. All of these used to be dwellings for the Hohokam and Sanawan people when they died out or disappeared somewhere around 1400 A.D. And that seemed like an appropriate place to introduce the anime I want to talk about today. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko, or Yokohama Shopping Trip Journal, is a quiet collection of tales about the future. It's a slice-of-life collection of OVAs where not a lot happens. One reason very little happens is there aren't a lot of people around anymore. It seems there was some sort of unexplained disaster that caused the sea level to rise and flood the old lands, and Mount Fuji has blown its top. But despite that, this isn't a dark future. The few people who are left live quiet, peaceful lives scattered around the remaining land. A few cars still travel the cracked pavement roads that are overgrown with plants. Electricity still flows in some of the remaining wires, and a few shops still open, a radio still broadcasts, and most importantly, someone restocks the vending machines. It's the twilight of the human race, and mankind has decided to go gentle into that good night and sit down on the back porch to wait for the sunset. It's a lot like retirement. Alpha is a robot, though that's a distinction without much difference. She seems as human as anyone. She eats, sleeps, drinks, and enjoys a nice friendly chat over a cup of coffee. In fact, she runs a small coffee shop herself since her owner left her in charge and wandered off some time ago. She lives alone in a small house attached to that coffee shop. Each morning she roasts, grinds, and brews some coffee and savors a cup or two herself. In fact, she's become her own best customer because other visitors are rare. The OVA set is subtitled A Quiet Country Cafe with Good Reason. Alpha's nearest nature is Oji-san, the old man who spends his days sitting in front of a gas station down the road. Gramps is human, with a rictus smile frozen on his face. We never actually see him pump a drop of gas, but apparently somebody drops in to refuel every now and then. Probably Alpha and her motor scooter. In the first of the four OVAs, a delivery robot named Kokoni will travel, slowly, to Alpha's cafe to deliver a package. There's no FedEx, and Kokoni doesn't have her own vehicle. She uses the bus and then hitchhikes in the back of a pickup truck. Once Alpha has checked out the present, she and Kokoni quickly become good friends, and Kokoni will visit later in the series again. The robot girls will scoot around the countryside and watch the pretty scenery. These four OVAs are based on a manga by Hitoshi Ashinano. Two OVAs were made in 1998 and two more in 2002. All the stories are quiet and very relaxed. In the second OVA, Alpha is struck by lightning and needs to be repaired, which introduces us to Sensei, or the Doctor. The lightning strike will suddenly inspire Alpha to take more nostalgic photographs. In this OVA, even being struck by lightning is somehow calming. In the third OVA, a typhoon will have Alpha taking shelter down in Gramps' gas station and fretting about her poor cafe up on the hill. Yeah, in this OVA, even a typhoon is somehow gentle and relaxed. In the final OVA, Alpha will decide to go traveling around the countryside to see and experience new things, taking odd jobs as she goes along. This OVA also has a parallel story as Kakone, unaware that Alpha's on vacation, comes to visit. It also briefly introduces some additional characters from the manga, Gramps' grandkids, and a forest-rolling wild woman. These cameo appearances may confuse those who haven't seen the manga, I suppose. Or perhaps they were meant to set up future OVAs that weren't made. Or maybe Naked Misago was just a cynical attempt to use fan service to boost sales. All of these stories move slowly and gently, and take time to watch a sunset, smell the flowers, or view the lights coming on at night. 
This reflective mood is enhanced by some appropriately relaxed music from a string ensemble. About two-thirds of the way through each of the first three OVAs, there's a short vocal piece to a montage that's almost like a closing credit, except there are no credits rolling and the story resumes when it's completed. The final OVA saves the very nice vocal montage and Alpha's photos for the actual closing credits. I like some of the small visual touches in the anime, too. For example, when Kakone enters a dark and unfamiliar room, she has to feel around on the wall to find the light switch. Or, when Alpha has a snack in one hand and a book in the other, she momentarily has to pause to consider how best to turn the page. The artwork of Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko also suits its calm mood. It's old enough to still be hand-drawn. It emphasizes landscapes and backgrounds rather than motion, since it's mostly about calmness, and it proves that you can make some beautiful pictures without a lot of fancy animation and expensive detail. There are frequent passages of shadows from clouds across the landscape in outdoor scenes, but the animators occasionally let their camera roam about. Alpha's an engaging character, friendly yet quiet, going about life and savoring the world around her. Because she often doesn't have anyone to talk to, she sometimes talks or thinks to herself to describe her emotions. Yokohama Kadashi Kiko certainly isn't for fans of action or romance stories. It's an example of a yashike, the gentle healing style, a chance to take a respite from the hectic world, much as the more recent Ari anime. They make an interesting contrast. Ari is set in a new world that's just starting out, whereas YKK is setting in a fading civilization that's concluding. Yet, each is upbeat and friendly in its own way. Unlike Aria, YKK doesn't have the emotional bonds of friendship between so many characters that Aria delivers, or Aria's range of personalities, since Alpha usually lives and travels alone in her world. There were a few things that puzzled me about the anime. In the first OVA, Alpha keeps a pistol handy in the cafe and tucks it into her belt when she answers the door. Kokone is likewise packing a gun. Apparently it was meant to suggest that there were hidden dangers in this twilight world, but after the first OVA, those weapons have vanished, apparently at odds with the intended mood of calmness. I give Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko four and a half stars for spreading a gentle, relaxing mood. Somehow I enjoy this quiet elegy at the twilight of the human race. As Alpha says, may it be a peaceful age. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko has never had a U.S. release. The 2002 DVDs are apparently still in print in Japan. And I'd like to thank Jason over at TheAnimeReview.com for suggesting this anime. Thanks for watching. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper.